Hi guys, I'm Heidi Hesrick and I'm here with my buddy Lucy and today I'm going to show you how to load a gel with DNA for running gel electrophoresis and I'll be showing you two methods, the dry load method and the wet load method and you can decide which you'd like or maybe your teacher will give you some time to experiment with each of them. So here's what we're going to be using today. First of all, I have my Edvotech M12 gel electrophoresis chamber and I have a small tray for a seven by seven centimeter gel. I also have a practice gel. So these come with the chambers and they're really good for gel loading practice before you do the real thing. Although you can also practice with an agarose gel, but this one's plasticky, you can wash it, just reuse it over and over again. I also have my 20 to 200 micropipette and the tips. And finally, I have some gel practice loading die, which comes with most of the kits. And I have a beaker of buffer. I'm just using water because we're practicing, but the capacity of the M12 is 300 milliliters. So that's for when I add my buffer. We'll start with placing the gel into the chamber. And if you're working with a real gel, I always have my students first slide their gel, their gel into the tray. And you want to put the wells on the negative end because the DNA is negative and it's going to move toward the positive. So we gently slide our gel into the tray, keeping it really flat because uh, they are delicate and will break. And then we take the tray and the tray is also going to fit down into the negative end. There are two different slots where you could put this gel because it's just a half size, so you could put it here or here. And either way, your wells are oriented toward the black negative electrode so that the DNA could move toward the red positive electrode. I'm going to demonstrate wet loading first because wet loading is the method of DNA loading that I learned first. Wet load, you go ahead and add your buffer. So as soon as your gel is in there, you pour your buffer doesn't matter which side you pour it into, it's like a swimming pool, it's going to fully fill your chamber. And it's really important to make sure that your gel is immersed in the buffer and that the wells are totally covered, you can't see them popping up at all. Your DNA samples will be similar in color. You want to push down to the first stop, put the tip in, then pull it out and I like to just set my elbow on the table so I can brace it, angle the tip like this so that it's resting against the side of the well, and then gently, I'm going to go ahead and release the DNA. Really important that you then pull the tip out. Do not let go with your thumb until you have the tip out because otherwise you're going to suck some of that sample back up out of the well and you're going to lose some of your sample. You also want to make sure to avoid pushing, pushing too hard onto the surface of the gel because if you do with with this plastic the tip won't go through but if you're using an actual gel your tip can very easily pierce the bottom of the well so I try to make sure that the tip is at an angle I'm never going straight down I'm never jabbing because I have seen students poke a hole in their well and then all of the DNA just leaks through the hole it's important to go slowly. If you go really quickly, you're more likely to have problems. I've had lots of air bubbles, which I'll say is not usually the case with actual gels. It must be more the case with the plastic. And I wouldn't worry too much about the air bubbles. Wells two and three are definitely the best. Okay. Um, I think it's definitely easier to load a real gel than a practice gel, especially all these crazy air bubbles. They're making it difficult. But wells two and three are by far the best of this sample. And I think well six looks really good too. There's just an air bubble on top of it. But I got some air bubbles into some of my other wells that then push the DNA out. That shouldn't be such a problem with your real gel. 
So now I'm gonna dump this and start over with a dry load. In a wet load, this is ready to go. We put the lid on and go ahead and run it. Okay, I'm now going to wet load this gel. And you can see we start out the same way. So we have uh, the gel down in the chamber. The difference is I didn't yet add my buffer. So this is called, did I say wet load? Uh, this is called dry loading the gel. And the idea is you don't have the buffer in yet, so the gel is dry when you're adding the buffer or when you're adding the DNA samples. And these samples are loading beautifully. I would say based on my demonstration, you're probably all gonna decide that wet loading is trash and dry loading is the way to go. And you might be right. Dry loading is pretty simple. The only thing is we are going to have to add the buffer at some point, and that's when it gets just slightly tricky, but it's still fine. So unlike with the wet load, we're not getting any issues with air bubbles. Our DNA all went in really beautifully, but the trick is we do still need to add the buffer. So how do you add the buffer when you have done a dry load? What I would do is add it from the opposite end. So pour it in over here. And once it gets close to the gel, it's gonna start going up and over it. Then I'm gonna come over to the other side. I wanna disrupt the DNA as little as possible. So I wanna fill each side so that it's not cascading over my DNA. And eventually it does have to cover the gel. And I'm just gonna do that kind of slowly. Again, from both ends. And the buffer can meet in the middle I could have gone a little slower with that. The gel loading die is heavy, so it does help keep the DNA down. So you can see, even though the buffer cascaded over it, the DNA is still really beautifully loaded, nice dark wells. I undoubtedly got a much better load from my dry loading, at least with the sample. Either you pick wet loading or dry loading, there is no one way to do this. Just slow and steady, take your time and practice, practice, um, and your gels will turn out beautifully. Thanks for watching, have a great day.